Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast as we're now moving on from the Thursday night football game and going to be looking ahead here to this upcoming weekend. And specifically right now, I want to focus on which of the 0-1 teams in the NFL entering into week two are due for and need to find a bounce back performance this week because as we know the statistics they're extensive they kind of get thrown in our face sometimes but falling into the season 0 and 2 and being able to try and dig your way out of the that hole to make the playoffs is deceptively very difficult only two teams since 2019 have been able to do so that is the Cincinnati Bengals in 2022 and the Houston Texans last year so we have 16 teams that lost last week so again just sort of deciding which teams would be more so in panic mode if they do end up losing this upcoming week and I do think there is a pretty clear number one, and that is the New York Jets. Last week, they played the San Francisco 49ers on the road. That is a very difficult situation to play in. Aaron Rodgers playing his first game of, really, his first full game with the New York Jets coming off of that Achilles injury that I didn't think that that was too much of an overreaction spot, but coming into this week, Two consecutive road games isn't ideal, but this week you have the Tennessee Titans, who last week lost to a team that didn't score a single offensive touchdown. And this is an area where if you are seriously considering the Jets to be Super Bowl contenders, you got to win a game like this. Against Tennessee, again, I just, I think due to the level of competition, that's kind of the biggest thing. I, I'm not ready to write off any team if they end up do falling into 0-2 necessarily, but the Jets are in a weird situation where obviously the pressure is on them. This is a make-or-break season for them, so it's not like you're sort of planning out, okay, well, the vision is there. No, the vision is winning this season, and you really can't afford to be fumbling around there all too long. So I think the Jets need a win this week, and if they don't, I start to have some real concerns with what they look like for the remainder of the season. Second team I have here is the Indianapolis Colts. Now, Hear me out here because the Colts obviously are a younger team, second year with Shane Steichen as their head coach. This is hopefully Anthony Richardson's first full season with the team that we all acknowledge that there is a lot of upside with this group and that they should continue to grow from here on out. But that being said, if we're talking about just this season and a lot of people picked them to make the playoffs this upcoming year, and this is where I think we could start to see that sort of fall by the wayside. They are going to Lambeau, obviously never an easy place to play a football game as an opposing team, but they are most likely going to get Malik Willis playing against them, somebody that they have a little bit of experience with considering Willis was with the Titans for a couple years. So they got, you know, their share of scouting against them, but Malik Willis is not a typical starting quarterback in the NFL, um, just based off of, you know, where he's at at this point. This should be a game where the Colts are able to capitalize. They are two and a half point favorites in this game as things currently stand. And again, if they end up losing this game and not making the playoffs this this year, I'm not worried about their long-term future. I do think that last year they were almost a little bit ahead of schedule, even with Anthony Richardson missing as much time as he did. But if we're talking about teams under pressure that are hoping to make the playoffs this year, this is kind of a must win for the Colts to some degree, as, as must win as you can get in week two, at least. The Cleveland Browns are definitely also on this list. They have another game that's not an easy one. They are at Jacksonville coming up this week. I am a believer in the Jaguars. I think their defense is going to be a lot better than people are anticipating. And 
the reason the Browns are under so much pressure is because after last week, I mean, all in the media this past week, it has been sort of slandering Deshaun Watson, which is fair because he was really bad against Dallas in week one. I thought that he was maybe slightly better in the second half, but at that point, the game was already over. And, you know, he also didn't do himself any favors you know, later in that game as well, where they were kind of maybe still in the game if they were able to score there at the end of the third quarter. But it was just a really bad showing overall for the Browns. Now, again, you can make excuses as well that they are missing both of their offensive tackles. Now, they were both limited participants in practice as of Thursday. So they at least have that going for them. We'll see whether or not Jedrick Wills or Jack Conklin are able to return for this upcoming game, which could be a difference maker for them. But I think that we're looking at sort of counting down the days until whether or not uh, Sean Watson is even going to continue to be the starting quarterback for the Browns. I think he's going to have maybe a little bit of a, a longer leash, just considering the financial obligations that they have to him. But Bill Simmons of The Ringer put out a podcast and he said that he thinks this is going to be Deshaun Watson's last start with the Browns. So, you know, the clock is ticking. The media is definitely on the backs of the Browns. And, you know, Jameis Winston probably also isn't the worst backup quarterback option. So maybe they do sort of pull the trigger on moving off from him a little bit earlier than you may think. But I definitely think that they have pressure surrounding them. Again, we're talking sort of more so media narratives and the investments into quarterbacks specifically with the Browns and this next team as well. The Atlanta Falcons, who last week looked really dysfunctional, specifically on the offensive side of the ball against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers also did not score a touchdown in general in this game and Ultimately, we're still able to beat the Falcons. Kirk Cousins looked really bad in this game with the decision-making on both of his interceptions, the entire lack of mobility. Now, in his defense, he was under an immense amount of pressure. The Steelers are still an elite defense, so there is that. This upcoming week, I mean, it's not going to be easy for them. They do have the Philadelphia Eagles in Philly on Monday Night Football. So, it's they're under pressure. I think the bigger thing for them is Kirk Cousins more specifically is under pressure to look better than he did this past week given the immense a, a, immense amount of investment that the Falcons poured into him with that contract in free agency and the fans of Atlanta I don't think are going to have all that much of an emotional attachment to Kirk Cousins if he goes out and he does not play well for them on a regular basis that I could see a lot of clamoring for Michael Penix Jr. to sort of kick in. So the Falcons are under pressure. Again, I don't even think, you know, a win would be excellent for them. That's not really where my standard is for them right now. It's more so the offense looking better. And again, talking sort of media pressure here more so than my actual concern level on their ability to make the playoffs. But The other team that has sort of been slandered all week long, I think unjustly so, is the Cincinnati Bengals and specifically Joe Burrow. You have Chris Canty of ESPN talking about how he's selling all of his Joe Burrow stock, that he was... He's been average these past couple years. I'm not going to lie. This Statistically, Joe Burrow has not been excellent by any stretch of the imagination, but... I am still a believer in him. I think there's been, you know, a number of varying factors as well that have come into play with the Bengals, him missing all of training camp with the calf injury last year that again, if you, if you want to say that injuries are just an excuse, I, I hear you, you play the games that you play in, you have to finish them out, but I do think that he was a little bit inhibited in 2023 to start the year. That that San Francisco game and what I believe was week five was sort of when we started to see 
Burrow coming around a little bit more and starting to play his game. I thought the Bengals were headed in the right direction. And then all of a sudden, the wrist injury occurs against the Ravens on primetime football that ended his career and, in essence, ended or ended his season, I should say. Not his career, but ended that and also... Uh, basically ended the season for the Bengals as a whole, as Jake Browning was never really the option for them. But, you know, I do think that Joe Burrow has it in him to be able to respond here. I'm not selling my stock in him. If anything, by the dip would probably be my advice to that. Last week, definitely not blaming the injuries on him. He said that the wrist wasn't bothering him despite the clip that was going viral about him drinking the water. I mean, from what I saw in the game itself, I don't think that it looked like he was inhibited. Now, you know, him saying, I I have a hard time believing there's no pain with him in that wrist. But either way, again, excuses are not really on the table for him that he is going to need to sort of respond to this. Now, this upcoming week, they do play the Chiefs in a game that I ultimately were about to get into my picks for the weekend. I did not go with this game, but just saying, if you're talking about sort of overreactions from week one and that's swaying a line, I mean, the Chiefs coming off a win against the Ravens, very convincing. I do think the Chiefs are going to be better than they were last year, which is a very scary thought. But they're six-point favorites over the Bengals, who everybody is entirely selling out on, selling their stock on. I think that this could be a at least keep it competitive bounce back spot. The spread is six. I kind of I, I again I'm not including the Bengals in my picks, but the Bengals to keep things close is definitely something that I think is very plausible. But. Let me know who you think is under the most pressure as well. I know this obviously isn't a consensus thing. I ran this list by my boss earlier this morning. He talked about it, the the Giants being under a lot of pressure this upcoming week. And I forget what the second team that he said. He said the, the Bears as well. But Bears also won last week. The Giants, I just don't necessarily think that they're a playoff team anyways. And I never did. So yeah, there's some level of pressure there as well because of the dysfunction that is definitely coming to fruition. So Giants could definitely be on the table here. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be diving into my best bets for the upcoming weekend. We did pretty well last week, all things considered, but you know we'll see whether or not that was just beginner's luck or if this is the start of something for the year to come. But before we get into that, we are going to be taking a quick break. Do not go anywhere. We will be right back. <laughs> 